I mean, I was so overwhelmed, insanely angry all the time to a point where I felt like I couldn't even control it. I wasn't sleeping well, and if I did sleep well, I never felt like I had energy. Nothing was enough. I wasn't enough. My husband wasn't enough. My kids weren't enough. I just lived in this gray world, and all I knew is that I couldn't do it any longer. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share today how minimalism saved me and it wasn't because I got rid of everything that I owned. I think decluttering was a humongous part, but it's so much more than that and I wanna share that with you today in a very vulnerable way. One where you guys can relate and say, that sounds like me, <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. And it's not like I wanna have all the answers, but I just wanna support you and encourage you and tell you through my experience and my journey that you don't have to stay where you are. And there is a way out. For me personally, it wasn't living a dull, plain, restrictive life. It was narrowing in on the things that mattered most to me and making space for them. Before I begin, I want to invite you guys to join my email list for real life writings, for a list of my favorites, and for updates on the course that I'm creating. One, to guide you and encourage you and inspire you to go from chaos to peace and to thriving again. And that includes bits of decluttering, bits of mental strengthening and helping you really hone in on the things that matter in your life. I am so excited about it. All I want to do is talk about it. It's nothing secret. I just, I want to help and I want to support women. And I don't want you to have to do it alone because I did it alone and I would have loved someone to come alongside me and say, you can do this. So that's what that's for. So connect with me, email me, whatever you need. Follow me on Instagram. I just want to be there for you. I feel like I keep saying that over, but that's truly where my heart is. So let's get into my story and just sit back and relax for a little bit because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Okay, so I started at a very overwhelmed and insanely depleted state. If I can explain this to you, I was frail. I had these dark circles under my eyes that just never went away regardless of how much I slept. I was losing hair. Nothing was enough. I wasn't enough. My husband wasn't enough. My kids weren't enough. My role as a mother, it wasn't enough. And I just lived a life striving to buy things, to obtain things, to prove myself, to feel like something was enough. And it got to a point where I was just like, I, I am suffocating. I cannot function. I cannot feel joy. Why can't I feel joy? And somewhere in that breakdown, like within a few days, I remember where I was when I broke down. Within a few days, I came across a blog post on minimalism. I read how this woman decluttered her closet. So I said, I'll give it a try. Decluttered my closet. Wow, was that freeing and amazing. Like the narratives that just disappeared when I got rid of some clothes, clothes that made me feel like I needed to prove myself. Like that was so freeing and I was like, what could happen if I continued this process and decluttered my whole home? So that's what I did. And you might think, okay, sounds easy enough. Like tell me how to do it. But I didn't feel peace still. I mean, I wasn't cleaning as much. Things were decluttered. I was still angry. I was still overwhelmed. I was like, okay, what now? <laughs> and I don't think I came to this point where I was like, this is what I need to do next. But this just subconsciously happened because I didn't have that much clutter in my life and in my environment. And I was able to welcome some better habits, some habits that were focused around stillness, like reading again, getting outside in nature with my children or just by myself, passively healing grounding, taking my shoes off, enjoying my cup of tea in the morning, lighting candles, all these little stillness habits, they just elevated our living space and our routines in our life. Saying no was also a huge part of stillness practices that I had to embrace. And then one of the biggest ones was gratitude. I read this book called The Ultimate Gift in high school. I made my husband read it before we got married 
And one of the chapters that has always stuck with me is The Gift of Gratitude. And I'll link this book down below. It's actually a very family friendly, really easy read. But I was reading through it again and decided like, okay, I'm going to write down 10 things I'm grateful for every morning. Just see how it goes. Again, I had the space, I had the time in the morning to do this. I feel like that state of gratitude is what projected me into a totally different version of Margaret. And I really wanna focus on this, like gratitude is what minimalism and simple living is for me. Gratitude is the definition of intentional living, simple living, and minimalism for me. It's coming from a place of gratitude, not a place of restriction, dullness, bare walls, not having anything to distract you. I think it's just learning what's important and what I can say thank you Lord every single day for. So I had a decluttered space. I have adopted stillness practices at this point and I was more grateful than I'd ever been. And I would say that this is when the mindset shift started to happen for me. And there were a lot of other variables and little details, little habits here and there that really created this boost, but those are the main points. And everything started to feel more purposeful, not because I was forcing it, but because just naturally, I had more appreciation for my small home. I had more appreciation for my husband and what he does for me. I had more energy, gratitude, and understanding to play the role as mother, to be a mother and to really just appreciate motherhood. That's not really what our culture is telling us to appreciate, but I just saw everything with different eyes, you guys. So, I mean, I'm a minimalist who didn't sell everything. I'm somebody who accidentally, <laughs> and I genuinely mean that, became a minimalist and will say that it is the most important journey that I have walked on to be able to throw out the temptation to always be in this state of want and to see the things that I have as beautiful, not by force again, but by this natural organic process of seeing value, bringing things into my home that add value and that are purposeful and intentional. There's just so many things that kept falling into the bucket that just really allowed me to fill back up and to pour from a full cup. I mean, I can look back now and see that I needed to get rid of stuff <laughs> and the clutter was suffocating these internal battles in my head that were desperate to get some attention. And it was a beautiful process, a random process, you know? I see beauty so much more clearly. There are so many self-help things out there right now and people telling you that if you do this, this will happen. But I wanna share my minimalism journey because all of ours are gonna look different and we all have different purposes in life. We have different things that we view as valuable, different intentions, different roles, different jobs, different homes, different financial situations. So there's not gonna be a one size fits all thing. And, and that's what I'm really trying to hone in on when I'm creating this course or any piece of content for YouTube, Instagram, or my email, because I'm like, you've got this. You know what needs to go and what needs to stay. And the best part is, is that when you really hone in on that, everything starts to fall into place. You see beauty so much more clearly. And I just wrote an email on that and I got so many emails back from you guys. I was just so blown away and touched from where <laughs> I'm sitting now. Consumerism, there was there was no beauty in my life. It was completely suffocated, not visible, but it was minimalism and simple living that revived the beauty in my life. And it wasn't through obtaining more, it was just honing in on the things that mattered in my life. That includes the way I decorate my home and the way I portray myself as a woman and a wife and a mother, how I take care of my health, how I see the world, how I see this butterfly that's right outside my window. I just can't believe, I, it's hard to even put into words. I can't believe how much things shifted when I just dedicated myself to decluttering, adapting simple habits, and then the transformation naturally just 
I'm just blown away. It's just not by force. It's just a willingness to let the intentional things thrive again in your life. So that's my story. And I'm sitting here, you know, look at this white, white, off white. I just love natural colors. I'm smiling. My hair's done. But I need to say that simple living and minimalism doesn't mean the hardships don't happen. But what I've seen in my life is that I'm not afraid of these hardships. I'm not fearful of them happening because I know they're essential. I know they're a part of my journey and I'm not in this crisis mode where if something happens I can't handle it. I'm prepared and I'm ready. I can handle these things and feel the heaviness of grief, feel the heaviness of loneliness in t at times. You know, like it doesn't mean life just automatically gets perfect, but everything makes more sense even the hard things i talk about beauty but i'm also going to talk about realness that's why i just i want to invite you to stay and learn alongside with me what it means to live an intentional life and i'll finish with this little story of breakfast this morning with my kids i've had a very stressful week i'm not going to go into it because it's more on like the personal side but accidentally overextending myself to certain situations we'll just <laughs> leave it at that and I was stressed, I was so tired. I haven't been able to like spend quality time with my kids in a long time. So I took them out to breakfast this morning, woke up so excited to like get this time with them finally, cause we've all been running around. And these two moms saw us sit down. I'm pregnant with my third. So they were just smiling and they were like, oh, we remember those days and you're gonna make it through. We just, we know what it feels like. And I was like, oh, like, Maybe they didn't mean to like say it in a negative light because I'm here with my two children and I'm smiling and I'm so happy. And I, I said, you know, I promise I'm cherishing these moments. I have so many moms that tell me, you know, hold on tight to those years. They're so sweet. She was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also know, you know, how difficult it can be and how you just want to strangle them. And I was just like, oh, no, not a judgment, oh, but like a, man, she was probably so overstimulated just like me because that is what I would have said. Even though I was trying so hard to be what my kids needed and to love them and serve them, I just physically couldn't see it as a gift three, four, five years ago. And it was clear that this mother kind of had a similar situation and I just had empathy. I'm like, man, I wish you could have heard the message that I heard as a young mom. That's all. That, that's just where I left it. I let my kids, you know, give them a little colored something something and I, I'm not saying I did it right because I had a hard week and I didn't do things right a lot, but I just feel like I got to see a version of me that would have been present if I didn't make these shifts and these changes. I don't know her story. I don't know anything about her, but that's what the Lord put into my head and allowed me to see this morning. And I was just like, you are doing the good work, even though it's hard, even though you have to constantly be chipping away at yourself, Margaret, this is where the value comes out when you walk the other way. So I'm just failing every single day, but still trying to walk the other way. And I welcome you to do that with me. So that's the end of my story. I'm gonna go get some tea, put some ice in it because it is hot. Thanks for staying all the way. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh, it's so it's just begun